The Dick Van Dyke Show was one of the most influential and groundbreaking TV comedies to ever hit the airwaves. It aired on CBS from 1961 to 66, with a total of 158 episodes spanning five seasons. The show is the creation of legendary producer Carl Reiner and starred Dick Van Dyke as television comedy writer Rob Petrie. His wife, Laura Petrie, was played by Mary Tyler Moore. One of the key characters Petrie often interacted with at work was Sally Rogers, another TV comedy writer who has been described as a woman who went toe-to-toe in a man's world. Rogers is played by actress Rose Marie, and while she certainly got her fair share of screen time, she later admitted she was jealous of how much focus was on her castmate Mary Tyler Moore. Join Facts First as we investigate why Rose Marie felt like she wasn't given the attention she deserved. Mary Tyler Moore was a newcomer when she was brought on. Dick Van Dyke's co-stars, Maury Amsterdam and Rose Marie, who played Buddy Sorrell and Sally Rogers, were both veterans of the entertainment world when they were hired. Mary Tyler Moore, however, was a fresh face in the highly competitive TV industry. Moore, who was later given her own sitcom, passed away in 2017. Before coming on to The Dick Van Dyke Show, she had previously only done a few commercials and danced on stage. She had played a receptionist on the drama series Richard Diamond, Private Detective, but the only part of her the audience ever saw was her legs. Van Dyke noted in his 2011 memoir, My Lucky Life in and Out of Show Business, that Moore initially didn't show much promise as an aspiring comedian, but she surprised him by how quickly she took to it. He said he'd never seen a transformation as pronounced as hers, and hasn't since. Rosemary was very jealous of Moore. While everyone seemed to be gaga over Moore, Rosemary was far less taken by her co-star. She'd previously been told the show would revolve mainly around the comedy writer's room at Petrie's place of employment. But once Moore had shown she was a force to be reckoned with, more and more of the series was devoted to showing off her wits. In an article printed by The Hollywood Reporter weeks before Marie's death in 2017, she was quoted as saying she'd been told that when she was hired, the focus of the show would be on her and Dick's characters. She was under the impression she'd be the primary co-star. But as the show progressed, she began to notice a lot more attention was being given to Petrie's home life. When she made this realization, she was admittedly disappointed. All she wanted to do was work more, but now it seemed like Mary Tyler Moore was the new star of the show, and she didn't like that. Marie even shared that the situation was more difficult for her because Moore was younger and prettier. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And keep watching to learn about Rose Marie's nine decade spanning career and how she responded to sexual harassment on the set of Top Banana. Marie and Moore remained friends. In that same Hollywood Reporter essay, Marie added that Reiner thought Moore's legs were a significant draw to the program. In an almost juvenile way, Marie went on to remark that both she and Moore had great legs, but the only ones that Reiner, his network executive buddies, and the men in the audience wanted to look at were Mary's. Clearly, she resented Moore for her looks and perceived attractiveness and felt she'd drawn the short end of the stick. The Dick Van Dyke Show ran for five seasons and launched Moore's follow-up sitcom. Although she and Moore never hit it off very well, Marie told the media a few years before her death that she and her former co-star still remained friends. Evidence of this friendship came to light when a note sent by Moore to Marie in 2000 was shared by Rose's daughter on Twitter. In it, Moore said, like it or not, you're my friend. Rose Marie still had a prolific acting career. Marie got her start in showbiz as a child actor during the silent film era. She enjoyed early success under the stage name Baby Rose Marie. When she was an adult, she became one of the first major Hollywood stars to embrace their given name. She was also known for her distinct singing voice. When she was five, she recorded a Vitaphone record titled Baby Rose Marie the Child Wonder. From 1930 to 38, she made another 17 recordings. Her first significant record hit store shelves in 1932 and featured Fletcher Henderson's orchestra as her accompaniment. Her 1932 recording of the song Say That You Were Teasing Me became a national hit. In 1960, Marie co-starred on the sitcom My Sister Eileen. The following year, she was brought in to play Sally Rogers on The Dick Van Dyke Show. She followed that role up by playing Myrna Gibbons on two seasons of The Doris Day Show. After making minor appearances on shows like The Monkees and The Hollywood Squares, she performed on three episodes of NBC's The Dean Martin Show. In the 1970s, she appeared in the police drama series SWAT as the recurring role Hilda. In the 90s, she was given another recurring role playing Frank Fontana's mother on the CBS sitcom Murphy Brown. For the remainder of the decade, she continued to make sporadic guest appearances on shows like Wings and Caroline in the City. Rosemarie Faced Sexual Harassment in 1951, Marie starred opposite Phil Silver in the hit Broadway musical Top Banana. 
She reprised her role three years later in the critically acclaimed film adaptation. Marie later revealed she would have been in more musical numbers if it weren't for the fact that she had publicly refused the sexual advances of the Top Bananas producer Albert Zugsmith. The incident happened after she had sung the song I Fought Every Step of the Way, which had several boxing references. After she ran through the scene, Zugsmith approached Marie and told her he could show her a few positions, and he didn't mean boxing positions. At first, she laughed it off, thinking he was joking. But then she realized he was serious when he told her that the picture could be hers if she gave in to his advances. Once she figured Zugsmith wasn't clowning around, she told him no. Towards the end of her life, Marie said it was the only time she had ever experienced sexual harassment in showbiz in her nine-decade spanning career. After Top Banana, she appeared in a theater production of Bye Bye Birdie in Dallas, Texas. She also toured with her co-stars Rosemary Clooney, Margaret Whiting, and Helen O'Connell in the musical review Four Girls Four. In 2010, she was a celebrity guest host for the comedy play Grandma's Rock, which was broadcast on California's KVTA and KKZZ radio stations. Rosemary's Private Life In 1946, she married trumpeter Bobby Guy. The couple remained happily married until Guy's death in 64. They had a daughter together, TV producer Georgiana Guy Rodriguez. Although the relationship was presented in the media as romantic, Marie had a platonic relationship in the 70s with Pussycat Theater's co-owner Vince Miranda. In her old age, Marie embraced changing times and was active on social media. She especially took a liking to Twitter, where she frequently expressed her support for women who had suffered from sexual harassment like she had. She passed away at her home in L.A. on December 28, 20. 2017. She was 94. Mary Tyler Moore died at age 80 at Greenwich Hospital in Greenwich, Connecticut on January 25th, 2017. And Dick Van Dyke is still alive and well at the ripe old age of 96. Now it's time to hear from you. What are some of your fondest memories of The Dick Van Dyke Show? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.